bloody way, right? You know? Right, but you I mean, know, also, I believe that, yeah, frankly, that with European and Japanese and Canadian and Mexican support, that that would make a factor. And then there's another factor, which we can't see what the future is like, and it's possible there won't really be an American government in the next couple of years. The way things are going, you know, uh, with, with, with laws not being respected here, there, and everywhere, you know, with our federal courts being turned into political tools. That rule of law would apply. What's this? I don't know. Basically, he let my people go. Right here? What's the, uh, well, you said mass uh, public support. Yeah. People support. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the fact that Republicans may decide, may realize that the only way they can hold power. When they're when when white people are declining in, pop, in the population, is to kick out the state that's already one half non-white. I mean, think about it. Everyone hears that there's 13 million. There's there's, there's 13 million. Uh, Everyone hears there's there's there's, thir there's 13 million Hispanics. Everyone hears there's three million uh, undocumented in America, right? Well, one of three of those is a Californian. One other another one of three of them is a Texan. And the remainder are scattered across the, all other 48 states. So if you want to get rid of a million undocumented, <laughs> yeah, you have a That's really your concern. We'll give it. We'll you know, give it. We're happy yeah, that, to take that, our walking paper. <laughs> well, so that yeah, argument might, like you said, that might be real popular to a lot of people. Like, I, mean, if it like take, I don't know if it really would Republicans <laughs> would want to see like parts of the United States sloughed off because there's they just want power. Right. Everything I've seen <laughs> is they seem to want power in any circumstances. <laughs> and them maintain power. Absolutely. They would have a larger percentage of I'll tell you something else, though. Do you have they have a very strong, they have a very strong uh, incentive not to make us angry at them. Because 40% of the Asian yeah. trade goes through one port. Los Angeles, Long Beach. I'm on camera. I was going to say something. Uh, money. That's, Plus, well, yeah, that's what they want to Trade. Yeah. Trade. Yeah. I mean, and every time someone tells that, well, you cut off your water. I'm saying, yeah, we'll cut off the trade, which means your economy will go into a toilet in approximately two, six hours. Yeah. You're panic buying from coast to coast. And, uh, you know, you'll realize very quickly you can't live without California on, yeah. on good terms. So, yeah. long before the water turns, I'll tell you, thing, remember one more thing. The water? What's most of that water used for? To grow food for the right. United States of America. Right. All we have to do is shut down the farming and, wines. and we can live wine. happily. <laughs> That's right. So California then America would have no trade, no economy, no jobs, and no food. There no food. <laughs> and, no, and, and, yeah, and the white wine, would, the Chardonnay, would just sort of go along with it. Yeah, so uh, on top of, you know, I don't, so I know that, that, that idea of force is not going to keep California in. It's going to be respect, and uh, you know, uh, you know, and we have a lot of political grievances. I mean, the fact that you know the um, you know because of our population, because of the way the power, because of the way power in the, in the Senate and in the electoral college is distributed, mm -hmm. a was a Wyoming senator, a Wyoming citizen has 66 times more power effectively yep. than a Cal than a California. The, the thing is so unbalanced. The county we are in right now, Los Angeles County, has 11 million people. That is more than, what, 19 other states? Yep. There are entire states that have fewer people than our county. It's absurd. You could just go on and on how unfair and undemocratic it is. I mean, democracy means something in my world. It means that the government represents the people. And whatever comes out of the government should be representative of the, of the popular opinion. That's how we're getting. Uh, well, you know, I guess the argument going back to electoral college is yes. that, you know, you have, you know, between Texas, California, and New York population, Florida, that uh, just a few states, you know, could swing without electoral college, could swing the whole thing. Oh, yeah. You know, so then the, the opposite view of the smaller states would be like, hey, you know, we don't have any representation, you know, in the, in the process because the big... The largely populated states are running the whole process. Well, how do you find you know, a balance, or is there a better way? You know, to well, I don't know. If you want an electrical, my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion, is simply just cut two, two, two votes from every state so that Wyoming just gets one and we would get 53. I'm not saying so yeah. I think that, 
That's still not fair. That so still just, leaves them overrepresented. You're talking about it's electoral like, college, so rather than having one electoral college vote for every House and Senate seat, yeah, you're saying just cut the Senate seats. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just so it's just, just that, that. Because the, the, house, house the House is already gerrymandered enough and stuff like that. Mm. So, uh, but at least it's something close to proportional. It's a reasonable compromise, and uh, and, it, and, it, and frankly, now here I'm going to speak of myself here, but I have involved in like small elections, even you know, party caucuses and stuff like that. I know how hard it is to count votes, mm -hmm. so I really worry if you break if you, if you go national popular popular vote, that then means that literally every every vote in every precinct becomes equally is equally important as every other vote in every precinct. Which means you can always find a, a, something to have an election dispute over. Right. Which means we would be, never have a president again. Chad, <laughs> we'll be counting hanging chads for. Although, I'm really worried about it. I don't think I know. Although we even every get other that. Western uh, democracies uh, votes their president by popular vote. I mean, we're the only one that doesn't. Uh, do that. not really. Yeah. Great Britain doesn't. Great Britain kind Great. of. Great Britain, which is actually kind of my personal motto for government. Because Great Britain, yeah, you vote for your you vote for your MP. All you vote for is your your, your member of Parliament. Right. And well, then, it's a different yeah, it's a Parliament. And then the national leader is whoever's the, the largest party. And the great system of that, and they don't have the extremes that you might have. And don't ever forget. I'm sorry to mention this, but Adolf Hitler was a, was a, was a result of proportional voting. The Nazis didn't have strong support anywhere. But well, they had 15, 20 percent support across the country. But go back to Great Britain for a minute. What's also fantastic about their system is they don't limit themselves to parties. I think they have what is it, 17 parties? No, they really got parties? they got five because of their because of their because of their uh, first past the post. It means that all the parties have a pretty much uh, regional. You got, a, you got a British Labour Party, you got a British Conservative Party, well, Conservative Party, you got your Liberal Democrats, you got your Scottish National Party, which, not, which totally dominates in Scot Scotland. In Ireland, you've got a Welsh Party, so you got Ply Cymru, which is your Welsh Party, no problem. And then you got two Irish parties, one representing the Catholics. Well, no. Ireland has the most craziest party. <laughs> you got, you got Sinn Fein. Thing, you got your Democratic yeah. Ulster Protestant. You're, don't, don't, you're called, they call the Democratic Unionist, the DU, or the Unionist. You got at least one more in there, too. Uh, so. Uh, but don't you think that fosters more compromise, more caucusing, more working together and finding coalitions? Well, they have Rather coalitions. Rather than our two-party system where nobody works with anybody? But I think there's actually other factors. For instance, they have the BBC. They've got a very functional media that tries its darndest to be representative and fair to everybody. Yeah, they have public media actually, which we no longer have at they, well, all. Uh, they have a model public media. Yeah. I mean, don't forget. I mean, like, I mean, uh, it isn't just the BBC. It's out of London, yeah. you know. There are regional BBCs, little mini BBCs, scattered all across. I know this because I listen to the BBC on the internet over the radio. I can tell you that Northern Ireland comedians are some of the funniest people, and they're on Radio Ulster. And there's some real funny guys over in, I love Scott, I love British comedy, there's some really funny guys up in Scotland, because they have a Radio Scotland, see? And they got a Radio Midlands, and a Radio South, and a Radio, yeah. So, so, and that's just radio, and then there's television. So, uh, but they got a, they got a media, don't forget, they also have 11 daily newspapers in, published in London. Um, you know, so you got every viewpoint represented. You know, yeah. The, the great joke is, you know, that the uh, Morning Star thinks that this country should be run by another country, and the and the and the Daily Mail readers think it already is run by another country. <laughs> Well, most most European countries have public stations, like the first station. Like we just we did an interview for Germany, and our whole documentary. They said it's going to be aired on Channel One in Germany. Every German tunes in on Sunday to this channel to get their news. It's a public channel, and so they they will all see it. So majority of them uh, go to the public channel. And most European countries is like that, and they have public debates where candidates aren't pushed by money by this. They right. they actually have to debate each other and uh, in public and stuff like that. So well, they have to debate you each know. other on Parliament. That's why I love the prime minister's you know, the prime minister's questions. Oh yeah. Where they're in the well, House Parliament, of Commons Parliament is like in such open discussion, open debate yeah. every week. 
I what, a, what a concept. Yeah. It's time. hilarious. If you ever watch them, it's really yes. hilarious yes. to see them. Yes. <laughs> Would the Prime Minister admit yeah. that her co-chancellor is a tosser? Yeah. <laughs> they don't really say that, but you... I could imagine if we had that kind of system. Could you imagine between the Republican and Democrats, it would be like brawling at each other. Well, yeah. and in some ways, it's actually. I mean, the British system. Is, I mean, I mean, in some ways, the British system is more polite than our system. Oh, very much. But uh, you know, you know for instance, uh, you're not allowed to address anyone directly. You have to address the speaker. Um, you know, you, have, you always have to be in third person. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, you know, my, and, and I love the, the opening of Parliament, where you know, you know that whole, the whole ceremony they have. No. The representative of the House of Lords. That's another problem we have in our country, by the way. We have our two. I realize it's our two house system is a problem. In Britain, there's a Commons. They pass the laws. There is a Lords, but Lords is kind of like a glorified revisor's office. They comment about the laws. But, the law, but since 1911, and that's a long time, since 1911, Lords has not had the power to block any legislation involving the appropriation of money. Um, Which is pretty much every legislation. Right, they can always put some money in there, yeah. and then it becomes a bill that Lords cannot actually prevent. Mm -hmm. They can debate it, they can hold it off to another session, I believe, but that's it. They can delay, and that's about that's all they can do. But anyway, the House of Lords head, who's a black rod, that's their sort of sergeant of arms, he comes yeah. over, all in his cute gown and over. He comes to the House of Commons, and he knocks three times. Someone opens the door and then slams in his face. <laughs> and knocks again. It's part of their ritual to demonstrate the independence of the commons from from the monarchy. And then they open it up and says, you know, the members of this honorable, the queen commands or requests, I think she says requests, the members of this honorable house to appear, uh, you know, to uh, come to the House of Lords, the other house. I forget what she says. She says in this very way. And then when they come out, and then they know you hear this, and they are intentionally, very studiously not in any kind of a procession. They're going to meet the Queen of England, but they're like rumbling like like school children. You know, rumbling, you know, mumbling before. I was watching, you know, you had the Prime Minister talking with the Speaker, and everybody else is just deliberately having their conversations. It's really cute, in a way. Acting, shuffling their feet, not in any kind of a... Just sort of like, yeah, i got to go over there, see what the old bat has to say. When, of course, the truth is... She's going to read something that the Prime Minister has written. Um, but it's, it's ancient political theater. And it's part of the continuity of, 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 the, of, the, of, the, of the Commonwealth, of the Britain. And so, um, and we'll see. But uh, anyways, I like the fact that you got you know, you one house. You vote for your member of parliament. Um, yeah, short elections are nice too, actually. Um, the fact that these districts are also very small. By the way, there's over 600 <laughs> members of the House of Commons, I believe, um, in a country of 60 million people. Uh, so you're likely to know you. You know you're likely to know you as much smaller. Right. Yeah. Um, and, um, and as I said, they, um, and, and, uh, and then, and then uh, yeah, you're, 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 you're Commons. Yeah, if you don't like what goes on, you know, you've only got one person to blame. And, uh, and, and there's your PM. Uh, so... It's a it's a simple deal. The other thing I like about it, maybe this will be controversial. This is why I'm only talking to myself. Right? <laughs> in Britain, because the agencies are in charge, are under the control of a official member of parliament. This is where you get the front bencher versus back bencher. You know? Your front benchers are people who have a the minister of transport, and they're representing Rotherhite mm -hmm. or wherever oh, yeah. it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. That has a wonderful system result. It means that those agencies are pretty much running themselves. Now, the way they do this is they have a permanent secretary. And the permanent secretary and the permanent undersecretary, blah, 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 are bureaucrats who run these agencies. That's all they do. And they run them, and, you know, and, the, and, and, the, you know, and the lights stay on, and the streets are paved, and everything goes on in Britain. Um, so, uh, whether you like it or not, our system is this problem where we get political appointees just come thing. out of left field who may know nothing about their agency and um, 
or they may represent some political, uh, you know, position or whatever. Yeah. You, you know, took my flag. Right. These people uh, are just because I gotta make sure that we get a clear shot of everything. Oh, okay. After yeah. that I can do that. Well, oh, we used to have that. That's. But the that's government my... in Britain. I'm not mindful Effectively, you know, they say who governs Britain? Well, it's not really your MP. It's not really the Queen. Uh, but the, the rating is continuity. You could depend on your government because it's the same government in a way. It's the same government it always was. Yeah. Well, you you know, see the, me. the old joke, you know, <laughs> that uh, elections never work because the, the government always wins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should say that uh, I went, the government always gets in. I'm sorry. The government always gets in, you know, because yeah. the phrase of the government gets in, meaning the, the party, you know, whatever party wins, technically, you know, they call it the government. And then the others, yeah, loyal opposition. I'm very intrigued. Yeah. Well, we'll see where it comes. Good luck to you. So, where are you from? I'm from Georgia. Oh, you're both from Georgia? Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he's our candidate. Get some yeah, cards. Did you get some cards? He's running for president. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you for visiting. So be president. And we're let him go. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want your your plate thing? I'm almost done. Okay. We interrupted. All right. No, it's all good. It's but all good. I, I really enjoy. I love history. Like I said, I, I never knew uh, that about California. Yeah. Just the, the well, the thing was, nobody else knew about it. It's not taught in our schools or anything. No way. But, <laughs> but that's the kind of thing that we kind of found in, our, in the process of our, of our doing our own, our own organizing. We've frankly been doing a lot of research. We're not just a bunch of people shooting our mouths Right, right. And we've been studying this stuff over and over again for several years now. And yeah, it turns out that, um, uh, uh, well, one of the big battles, the biggest battle, uh, you want to go back, I'll tell you, Mount Hill, interesting little story.